So in this video, we will be talking about a uh, yet important topic, which is taken from Economic Survey of 2021-2022. So the theme of this uh, Economic Survey for this year is policy making under uncertainty. So what we understand from this statement is that there is a lot of uncertainties which we are facing as economy is concerned because see, no one knows, right, uh, that uh, what could be the future scenario because there are a lot of uncertainties like we have a lot of waves right so we don't know that how a wave will be affect us or will, will be going to affect us because see uh, the, the variants which we are getting of the covid speaks another volume right because sometimes there are some variants which are not such you know affecting our health but then there are some which are affecting us so this covid if we talk about covid covid brings health concern right and this health concern brings economic crisis. How? See, if uh, there is a COVID and there are health concern, health concern happens to the individual or a citizen of the country. So if there are some health concern, the person or a lot of group of person or various citizens will face a lot of problem in efficiency or effectiveness in giving their fullest in production or their contribution in economy. Because if you are fit, then you can give your 100% in any of the development which you are making. But if there are health concerns, you could be, you know, into the lockdown. So what the repercussions of this is the economic crisis. This is something which we have seen in the era of COVID. If there are health concerns, there is an economic crisis, right? So there are uncertainties that we know, right? We don't know what will happen in 2023. There could be another wave. There could be another mutation. So. What could be the strategy of the government in this uncertainty is what we are going to look in this session. So we will be looking at various uh, strategies and uh, one of the strategies is waterfall strategy. So because see, when there is an economy crisis, mostly you have two strategies. What is waterfall or what is barbell? We have a lot of strategies, but this strategy speaks volume, right? Because see, there is something which is extremist and there is something which is conservative because see, there could be two types of uh, you know strategies which can cope this economic crisis. There are two heads, right? There are a lot of uh, uh, you know strategies in this heads only. This is something you know which acts as an aggressive head, and this is something which is a conservative act. Okay, we will be looking at uh, one by one what is the waterfall and what is the barrel strategy. So we have the waterfall strategy. What happens is in it the government provides fund to the public because see in such extraordinary time as we have in COVID, the go every any government could think that there could be a problem of less demand over the supply. That is why the economy is in crisis because see, there is a cycle. What cycle says, if you have money, what will we do? Uh, what you will do of this money? See, this is something which government thinks and something which happens actually in a lot of ways. If you have money, what will you do? You will demand or you will increase the demand. What happens due to this? Supply falls short. Due to this, price increases. Due to this, seller gets induced to produce more. So production get increases. Due to this, employment gets generated. Due to this, income gets generated and you have more money to demand more. So this is how the cycle works. So if you provide money to people, the cycle will continue to run and the government thinks that this situation can make you out from economic crisis. But this strategy don't work in every situation, right? Because see, there are various uh, other things as well in economy because economy is a dynamic subject. So we have to look something implications of it as well. See, because if you provide a lot of fund, then we don't have any scientific formula that how much fund you should provide that economy gets out of the crisis, right? First is this thing. You don't have any specific type of, you know, formula or, uh, you know, mantra of getting this sequence right. So as you provide a lot of fund to the people, as we have seen in the case of uh, USA, USA uh, is approached a waterfall strategy to uh, come out in from this economic crisis. We uh, term it as helicopter money. In helicopter money, the government of USA has provided a lot of money to the public. So the cycle could run. But what happens in return? Resources crunch. And the supply falls drastically because see, if you provide money to the people today, they will start demanding today. But if the supply falls short today, it will take time to get replenished, right? Because see, some supply is something which cannot, you know, get replenished overnight. It takes some time because, you know, procuring the raw materials and, you know, making it into the production, it takes time. So this is something. So always aggregate supply falls short to aggregate demand. 
what happens when aggregate demand is more than aggregate supply? This is a situation of inflation that is US is facing right now. So if we talk about this waterfall strategy, it is rigid. You cannot change it, right? Because see, the thing is, every country right now is facing a problem of uncertainty. Whatever the policies they are making, they, are, they should make according to the uncertainties. But what is happening in return? They are adopting some uh, uh, strategies which are rigid in nature, like we have waterfall strategy. So you cannot change uh, or you know you cannot modify this strategy as per the uncertainties of future. Second, no feedback. Like see, you are making uh, people a lot. Uh, are, you are filling the pockets of the people of the from money, but you are not taking another feedback because see, there's something more than money. Uh, people would require social security. People would require health security, right? But in this concern, you are not accepting any such feedback. Third is unpredictability. You just provide fund and this strategy goes away. What if there is a unpredictability? Like in future, there could be three digit of inflation. In future, there could be more worse COVID, which could uh, trigger more health concern, which could trigger more health, uh, you know, more uh, severe uh, economic crisis. What will happen? You have provided a lot of money. Now, if you provide, if you follow this same strategy, your government or your country could come into deficit. Deficit is a situation when your expenses are more than your revenue and it's not a good situation, right? So unpredictability and randomness. You don't have any specific formula to provide this fund to the public. In what amount you should provide this fund to the public, don't have any specific formula or you know method or mantra. So it is all about randomness, right? You just play a card and it's like a gamble. So this is not something which our country should adopt and this is what our country haven't adopted yet. So what our country or our government has adopted is this barbell strategy. What is bubble strategy? It is most conservative uh, strategy. We talk about agile approach. We talk about safety nets. These are the characters as well. These are the assumptions of this strategy as well. And these are the disadvantages as well, which we are going to pop in this bubble strategy. So they are, these are the two heads of bubble strategy that is agile approach and the safety nets. What are agile approach? See, agile is the opposite of fragile. What is fragile? Fragile is something which, you know, doesn't, uh, which is not robust. Because see, we have glass. If you fall it on the ground, it will break, right? So it is not agile. It is not robust for the situation being. So our economy could not be as a glass fragile. We have to make our economy agile so it can cope with any uncertainties which are going to get or going to happen into the future. So what government does in this situation, in this agile approach, government of India collects data. What is this data? This data is of 80 high frequency indicators. Like I will, I would give you an example. <laughs> like we have lichens. You would hear in the environment or ecology section, we have lichens. What lichens does, if the lichens are present in an environment, it shows that the air is healthy. But if lichens are not present, it shows that uh, the air is polluted, right? So these are some indicators of environment. In the same way, we have indicators of econ economy. So if these indicators are doing well, the economy is doing well. If these indicators are not doing well, we have to know or we have to collect data why they are not doing well and we have to make our strategy according to the data which we have received. I will give you an example. We have 80 high frequency indicators. That means this indicator influences our economy as a whole. And these are some, I would give an example like inflation, industrial output, we have GST collection, we have a cargo movement. So we have a lot of uh, high frequency indicators and I have just taken few to make you explain that how it works, right? See, I'm taking the example of inflation. The government collects data of inflation and what the government procures that inflation is high. Inflation is high, suppose, yeah? Because we have a target of 4% plus minus 2%. This is the target that the government should maintain this uh, inflation, but the government uh, watches that the inflation is 7% suppose. It is maybe skewflation, you can take an example. What government does? The government says that in during inflation, aggregate demand is more. That is why there is inflation. Aggregate supply is less. That is why price is rising. What government does? It collects this information and according to this information, it makes a strategy. This strategy is made according to the data collected in this stage, right? 
So what government would do? In this situation, government will make such monetary policy or fiscal policy which will result in decreasing this aggregate demand. Right? I would take another example for it. We have industrial output. If the government is thinking that industrial output, industrial output is decreasing, what government would do? Government would provide subsidies. Like I would give an example that government takes a data that in 2019 the industry, I would take an example, industry A. The industry A in 2019 produced 100 kilograms, but industry in 2020 produced only 80 kilograms. So this is decrease, right? This is decrease in production. So industrial output decreased. So what government? Government collected the data and according to this, the government provided subsidies, decreased taxes, so the producer could induce to produce more and get this targeted as it was before, right? So as per the data collected, the government made a strategy. But now uh, think about it. <laughs> Everything does not work around this 80 high frequency indicators, right? We have to make some safety nets. We will talk about it later on, but first let us uh, think about, uh, let us focus on this topic first. So the government made a strategy according to the data collected, but the government also takes feedback. So because we have to consider this uh, disadvantage into advantage, government takes feedback as well. This feedback is of like example migrants. I would give an example for better understanding. Vulnerable section. Etc. For example, see, the government collected data, there is a decrease in industrial output. That is why government has provided subsidy, more subsidies and less tax, uh, tax, taxes in this strategy. But government uh, went, took the feedback of migrants. What migrants said? Migrants said that we, uh, migrant A said that I used to work at uh, Maharashtra, but I belong to UP, but now due to COVID, I am in UP and I am unemployed. You could do one thing. This is uh, you know suggestions of feedback which is taken by the government from these migrants and they have said that uh, do something for us. Industrial output is low, provide the subsidies and a lower tax to the indigenous or a factory or industry which is based in UP so we could get employment in it. So what government does, first the government was providing industrial output or uh, the subsidy and taxes and industry based in Maharashtra. Now what government does, according to the feedback which is collected, government made some changes that is policy readjustment. This policy are readjusted according to the data which is collected or the feedback which is collected by various groups of society. Right? So this is how the barbell strategy works or the agile approach actually works, right? So we have another thing is as well, we have a safety nets, right? What are safety nets? We are going to look. <laughs> See, whatever the strategy is made. Whatever the strategy is made or whatever policy registered strategy is made, you cannot claim, no government is claiming that it would work for betterment, 100% betterment or it would give 100% result, right? Because there are a lot of uncertainties. You don't know that what mutation that COVID can get and it would create different questions, more, even more recover questions which, you know, which wouldn't have thought by the government or out of the reach of the government. So there are, also, there are always risk, right? In this strategy, there are always risk. So in this strategy, we have always risk. So to cope this risk, the government coupled with the agile approach, keep some safety nets. Why? To bring the risk which is arise due to unpredictability lower. Like we have, uh, we have seen that this strategy have a lot of risk. To minimize risk, to minimize this risk, what government does? To minimize this risk, what government does? Government provides a lot of safety nets. Like we have a lot of safety nets, we are going to talk about. So we have like direct benefit transfers. We have DBT, direct benefit transfer, like we have cash transfers. In Atman Nirbhar Bharat, government has provided a lot of cash in various forms. Government could increase employment. Government could focus in skill development. Quartage or MSMEs should be promoted, right? These are the some uh, safety nets which are provided by the government with which is coupled with the strategy. We have food security as well. The government has provided food security. We have we have National Food Security Act which is working, right? We have Antyodhya, Anyojana, right? We have a lot of food securities as well because whatever the repercussions this strategy makes or whatever the unpredictability of the future, the government could cope with this safety nets, right? 
so this is the thing uh, which the government has adopted and uh, the government is working according to this strategy for as such now the government hasn't uh, adopted the waterfall uh, strategy because you know it has a lot of disadvantages in the survey economic survey which we had right now of this 2021 2022 the government has adopted this barber strategy for this video that's all we have covered it comprehensively thanks for watching